When is the last time you stood back and appraised your life, measuring up every element, seeing what you should keep and what you should change? When's the last time you asked yourself, what makes me happy? And how can I get more of that? We recently rewatched Under the Tuscan Sun, a movie from 2003. In this movie, Frances Mays discovers that her husband is leaving her for another woman and is kicking her out of the house. In an effort to console her, her friends give her a trip to Italy. And while she's in Italy, on a whim, she decides to buy a run-down villa. And that's how the story begins. This premise is incredibly common in movies and stories in general. An unhappy person decides to completely overhaul their lives in the hopes of something better, or at least something new. Because anything must be better than their current situation. Now, if it's a tragedy, they will lose, or they'll die, or they'll end in misery, punished for their naivety. If it's a comedy, they win. Frances Mays, whose memoir, Under the Tuscan Sun, is the basis for the movie, is still living in Tuscany to this day. She's been there since 1989. And if that isn't a win, what is? This all comes back to the storytelling principle of want versus need. The main character wants something, and what they want is what's gonna drive them through the story. They want to be famous, or they want money, or they wanna find love. But what they need is what they'll learn in their pursuit of their goal, of their want. And that usually is different. We can't always get what we want, as the Rolling Stones said, but sometimes we get what we need. In Under the Tuscan Sun, Frances clearly states her wish. She wants a wedding on her property and she wants a family. That is what she wants and that is what she pursues in the movie. Eventually, at the end of the movie, she kind of gets what she wants, but it doesn't look like what she thought it would look. She finds out that the love and happiness that she was looking for has taken other forms. The wedding she wanted on her property happened, but it was between a young couple that she'd started to befriend. And the family that she wanted was there, but it was her friend and the new baby, and that, that was the family. So Frances's want and need ended up being not what was expected. It didn't come from her own romantic interests. Although the movie does end with the introduction of the man who would become her husband in real life, because, I mean, this is a rom-com, so. So what does this have to do with anything? Why am I going on about an okay rom-com from the early 2000s? Well, if this is the first time uh, you've seen any of my videos, I'm a Canadian filmmaker moving to Vietnam with my family where I'll be teaching in an international school. Now, yes, I am also uprooting my life and moving to a foreign country, but my move is much more calculated and it isn't meant to be permanent. I'm not buying property in a foreign country yet. But just like the character in Under the Tuscan Sun and in any story, my move, this move, this going to another country, this uprooting of everything I know except for the three other members of my immediate family, you know, it was sparked by a want. I am a millennial. I will be 40 in a few months. And I've never stopped appraising my life, measuring everything up, asking what should I keep? What should I change? What's the cost 
of, of just maintaining the status quo, of keeping on this track. And isn't there a way that we could have something better? Or at least something different? So let me clearly state my want as if this were my wish scene and I was putting it all on the line. Let's call this movie Under the Southeast Asian Sun. Because like under the Tuscan sun, but but I'm not going to Tuscany. I'm going to Vietnam, which is this Southeast Asia. You get it. Okay. Stated wishes. I want to work to live, not live to work. That means less stress, less reliance on bringing tons and tons of money in order just to make ends meet. That means less commuting or no commuting, ideally. That means not having to go through the gloom of winter, at least for a little bit. For me, a creative type, if ever there was one, I need to put myself in a situation where I can do the things I enjoy doing. For me, that's making videos and short films. You're gonna be hearing me talk about this book a lot, and yes, there is a link in the description, but The Geography of Bliss by Eric Viner is fantastic. He goes around the world looking at what makes people happy. And in Iceland, creativity, man. Creativity and an openness to creativity and encouraging creativity. That's, that's why people so far up in the north are happy. Because the place is called Iceland. And people in Iceland are still happy. Go figure. I wanna travel with my family. I want us four to experience new places, new customs, new foods, all of it. I want us to live the highs and the lows of traveling together and make lasting memories. Traveling here in Canada, it's expensive. And that means that if we stayed here and I wanted to travel, I have to work more. And more work means less time to do other things that we enjoy. So I'm sacrificing time in one place in order to gain it somewhere in the near distant future. In Vietnam, with the cost of living so much lower and the cost of traveling so much lower, we will have the opportunity to travel all over Southeast Asia at least. And we'll see things and we won't have to work 80 hours a week. And the third thing, I want my children to learn and see that you don't have to live the exact same life your parents lived. You can make your own decisions. You don't have to twist yourself into a shape that is deemed acceptable to those around you. Your life is yours to do what you want with it and, and that can come in many many shapes. The only thing you have to do is be active in the pursuit of what you want. If you've ever overhauled your life, if you've ever made big changes in order to pursue what you want, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Did everything go according to plan? Did your wants line up with your needs? Or was it just like a super, super bumpy road? And you regret every minute of it. If you've always dreamed about doing something different with your life, of, of changing things, what's holding you back? Why haven't you done it yet? Why aren't you going for what you want? For my part and my current plan, I know that all the international school teachers I've talked to so far have zero regrets about going to teach abroad. But that doesn't mean that I'm expecting a completely smooth ride. I know that there will be things that will happen that are unexpected and that are not fun. I expect that. So what is it that I need? How are my wants 
and knees going to line up. My life of comedy, is it all gonna go super smooth and we're gonna have bundles of laughs and it won't end in misery? Or is, is it all gonna end terribly? And I'm gonna regret it. Will my wants be revealed as naive or misguided? The reality is that life isn't like a movie. It's not a comedy, it's not a tragedy. It's much, much messier than that. And the reason tragedies make such good, captivating stories is that they're rare. Tragedy happens very, very seldomly in an average person's life. And that is a good thing. As for the adventure I'm about to embark on, only time will tell. All I can do is go for what I want, pursue it. We are all the heroes and the writers of our own lives.